ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯ ನಮಃ ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಕೂಜಂತಂ ರಾಮ ರಾಮೇತಿ ಮಧುರಂ ಮಧುರಾಕ್ಷರಂ ಆರೋಹ್ಯ ಕವಿತಾ ಶಾಖಾಂ ವಂದೇ ವಾಲ್ಮೀಕಿ ಕೋಕಿಲಂ ವಾಮ್ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಟು ದ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ನೈನ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ನೈನ್ ಟು ವರ್ಕ್ಶಾಪ್ ಐ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಈಚ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಫಾರ್ ಜಾಯ್ನಿಂಗ್ ದಿಸ್ ಲೈವ್ ಸೆಷನ್ ಆನ್ ಯೂಟ್ಯೂಬ್ ರಾಮಾಯಣ ಅ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಥೌಸಂಡ್ ಇಯರ್ ಎಪಿಕ್ ಸ್ಟೋರಿ ಫ್ರಮ್ ತ್ರಿತಾಯುಗ ಸ್ಟಿಲ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ ಸಚ್ ಅನ್ ಇಂಟಿಗ್ರಲ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಅವರ್ ಇಂಡಿಯನ್ ಡೇಲಿ ಲೈಫ್ಸ್ ಕ್ಯಾರೆಕ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ರಾಮ ಸೀತಾ ಹನುಮಾನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಮೆನಿ ಅದರ್ಸ್ ಸ್ಟಿಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ದೇರ್ ರೆಲೆವೆನ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಅವರ್ ಡೇಲಿ ಕಾನ್ವರ್ಸೇಷನ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಕೀಪ್ ಲರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಅ ಲಾಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಲೆಸನ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಬೀಂಗ್ ಕೋಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ಅವರ್ ಕಾನ್ವರ್ಸೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಬೀಂಗ್ ವರ್ಷಿಪ್ಡ್ ಆನ್ ಮೆನಿ ಆಫ್ ಅವರ್ ಒಕೇಶನ್ಸ್ ಇವನ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಮೆನಿ ಸೆಂಚುರೀಸ್ ರಾಮಾಯಣ ಸ್ಟಿಲ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ ಸಚ್ ಅ ರೆಲೆವೆಂಟ್ ಸ್ಟೋರಿ ವಿತ್ ಮೆನಿ ಇಂಟ್ರಿಗಿಂಗ್ ಕ್ವೆಶನ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ವಿ ಸ್ಟಿಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ವಿಚ್ ಕೀಪ್ಸ್ ಟ್ರಬ್ ಟ್ರಬ್ಲಿಂಗ್ ಮೆನಿ ಸ್ಪಿರಿಚುವಲ್ ಇಂಥೂಸಿಯಾಸ್ ವೈಲ್ ವಿ ಕಮ್ ಅಕ್ರಾಸ್ ಮೆನಿ ರಾಮಾಯಣಾಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಸೆವರಲ್ ಆಚಾರ್ಯಸ್ ರೈಟಿಂಗ್ ದೇರ್ ಕಮೆಂಟ್ರೀಸ್ ಪೋಯೆಟ್ಸ್ ಕಾಂಟ್ರಿಬ್ಯೂಟಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಇನ್ ದೇರ್ ಓನ್ ವೇಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ದೇರ್ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟಿವ್ ಟಚ್ ಟು ಇಟ್ ವಿ ಹವ್ ಸೀನ್ ಹರ್ಡ್ ಬ್ಯೂಟಿಫುಲ್ ಫೋಕ್ ಸ್ಟೋರೀಸ್ ನಾಟಕಾಸ್ ಯಕ್ಷಗಾನಾಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ಲಿಸ್ಟ್ ಗೋಸ್ ಆನ್ ಬಟ್ ಸಮ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಕ್ವೆಶನ್ ದಟ್ ಸ್ಟಿಲ್ ರಿಮೇನ್ಸ್ ಇಂಟ್ರಿಗ್ ಸೊ ಲೆಟ್ಸ್ ಡೀಪ್ ಡೈವ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಅ ಸೆಷನ್ ಫೈವ್ ಇಂಟ್ರಿಗಿಂಗ್ ಕ್ವೆಶನ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಅಮ್ ರಾಮಾಯಣ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಟ್ರೈ ಮೇಕಿಂಗ್ ಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಟು ದೀಸ್ ಕ್ವೆಶನ್ಸ್ from our bhashyas and from varmiki ramayana and a lot of other questions that we would cover in the session some of the questions which, which are the five intriguing questions which are did shri rama and sita lead a tragic life in pursuit of dharma why did hanuman suffer memory loss is it right to paint ravana as a bad character did hanuman try to swallow the sun and faint why did ravana and wali fight while rama while rama who is known as the avatar of vishnu so we'll try and answer to some of these intriguing questions and try and understand the what is the right narratives to these questions mr sundar sundar madakshira who is a speaker of today's session who is currently working as the ceo of at resolve and also has been mentored by well known scholars like shri parbanjana acharya shri shri Shrikanta Chahar Bayari and Shri Shrinidhi Acharya. So I request all the viewers to actively participate. So as we chat, please keep your questions handy so that we could drop it into the comment section so that we could pick it up and answer them. Also, so please check out our MFI YouTube page. Try consuming some of our thoughtful content that we have put up. So accordingly, like, comment and share. So with this, let's begin the session. Hi Sundar, good evening. Hello, uh, hello Santosh and uh, welcome to all the participants of the Madhvacharya for the youth, the 129th uh, workshop that we are having. Uh, it's amazing that we've traversed such a long distance um, all these years and uh, today we are here to ask and answer some very, very commonly held notions and questions about uh, the great epic of Ramayana. So I'm right. looking forward to this session. Cool. Thanks, Sundar. Uh, like uh, some of these questions are really intriguing because it it sounds like very different when you hear, but because these so questions actually sound very silly. Like you know, Hanuman like swallowing sun. I mean, how do you swallow such like huge uh, uh, star? So all these questions, let's sort of deep dive. Uh, looking forward for your thoughtful narratives to these questions. Absolutely, Sundar. So today, I think the way we have structured it. is that we are going to be taking the first five questions that have come to us uh, over and over again over many workshops and also commonly held the myths about uh, ramayana and after these five are done uh, we have planned for a quiz that you will be conducting uh, to answer a few more questions uh, sure. these are not fact based questions like the way we did in mahabharata we will do a separate video on uh, fact based uh, proof of uh, how ramayana happened a little later but today we'll be focusing on the series of questions that are there and we put it in the form of a quiz so all the people who are attending this be ready for the quiz session uh, it promises to be very interesting so right. uh, santosh with those words let's get into a little bit about if you can bring up the slides about yeah. what ramayana is all about uh, shri ramayana at a very at a very simple level is nothing but um, uh, the story of Uh, the avatara or the incarnation of lord rama lord rama 
is the incarnation of Lord Narayana and one of the Dashavataras. The whole story revolves around Sri Rama, Sita, Hanuman, Lakshmana and the greatness of these people. At the same time, the crookedness of the demons who were there, which is predominantly Ravana, Kumbhakarna, Indrajit and so on and so forth. Uh, when, when we look at the whole topic of Ramayana, it started, it has its genesis, not with the Valmiki Ramayana and the several other versions of Ramayana which have come later. It has its genesis actually in what is called the Shatakoti Ramayana. Shata means 100, Koti means a crore. So it had actually 100 crore shlokas. So you can imagine how voluminous the original Ramayana or the Mula Ramayana is. Uh, it was actually uh, some something that was created by uh, Sri Hayagriva, which is a form of Lord Vishnu. And Sri Hayagriva then preached it to Brahma. And then from there, he preached it uh, to the sage Narada, who then preached it to Valmiki. And uh, it is uh, we must be really thankful to uh, the sage Valmiki that he put up these 100 crore shlokas into a shorter form, relatively, uh, and, and called it the Valmiki Ramayana. So what we have as Ramayana today is actually the one written by Valmiki. But the seminal work on Ramayana is actually done by Sri Madhvacharya. In his Grantha Sri Mahabharata Tatpar Nirnaya, he is devoted chapters number 3 to 9 of the total 24 chapters uh, to be focused on Ramayana. And why is this? Sri Mahabharata Tatpar Nirnaya, as the name suggests, is an exposition of Mahabharata. And within the Mahabharata itself, you find the story of Ramayana getting recounted in the Vanaparva. We'll not get into too many details of all that. But right now, what we have today in front of us is a, a wonderful epitomization of the entire Ramana, Ramayana into chapters from chapters number three to chapter number nine of Mahabharata Tatpar Nirnaya, which is actually that of Ramayana. So that's what we have. So based on this uh, version, Many other uh, people have written Devaranamas and songs extracting this, these lessons about what the, the, the avatara of Rama really was. Sri Narayana Pandita Acharya, one of the greatest scholars of our times, who's written the famous Sumadvijaya, has also written a book called the Sangraha Ramayana, where he has actually brought in the learnings about Ramayana that come from the several Puranas. The list is there in front of you, so I will not repeat it. Were almost all the Puranas, major Puranas and the Upa Puranas actually recount the story of Sri Rama. So he's put that into a single form. And what we have today is another very well documented, very well researched book called the Sangraha Ramayana. Thankfully, both of these uh, have been published along with translations in Kannada, which were released by our guru, uh, Dr. Vyasin Kere Prabhanjanachare. We will say, share the resource as we go along. And so that is what is what we call Ramayana today. Of course, subsequent to that, as uh, Santosh, you rightly said, many others have also given their own exposition in poetic form and several others. The, the challenge with many of them, if not all, is that they do not actually reflect the reality, uh, the way it has been told in our epics, right? So when, when, when we say that it does not reflect, what it means is that it whatever is written as a story of Ramayana or the story of Sri Rama has to be consistent with other narrations. The moment there is inconsistency, that means there is something wrong in the way it has been interpreted. The second challenge also, that there has been a lot of social interpretation of Sri, Rama, of Sri Ramayana, which means that depending on the social challenges facing different times, Ramayana has been amplified in very different ways. Because of which, what could potentially happen is that the real spiritual meaning, which is the main purport of, of Ramayana, gets lost in, in the process. It's fine to have social debates, but to able to understand the spiritual message, because the text was created to give a spiritual message. Sri Hayagriva, as I said, is the incarnation of Lord Narayana. Lord Narayana does not have to incarnate to give lessons on social uh, re reasons alone. There is the, a larger spiritual purpose for which these texts have been written. So that is a little bit of a history about um, about uh, Ramayana Santosh. So that's a, like a background uh, to how we can get started on the topic of 
uh, Ramayana. Right. Uh, thanks, Sundar, for uh, giving that background about Ramayana. Uh, while uh, uh, while it has it's it's a seven thousand year old uh, uh, epic, and uh, there's a lot of narratives, and uh, it's so important uh, for us to know the the right spiritual meaning, or else uh, we completely get lost, and then we start. Uh, you know, thinking of some stories which might not spiritually sort of have any value to it. Uh, thanks, Anand. Right. So I'll I'll move on to the next slide. Uh, uh, so that like did uh, Rima, uh, did Rama and Sita has uh, uh, has that led their life for fourteen years in Vanavasa? Like, how was their life like? Was it very uh, tragic or uh, how was it like? It's such a complex question Absolutely. that we have. Yeah, it's a very common question, and why one goes by the poetic versions of Ramayana, one is one always sees uh, Sita Devi sitting under the under the tree in uh, uh, you know in Lanka. Uh, we hear about Rama frequently crying because he is uh, somebody has kidnapped his wife and uh, has taken him away from uh, taken her away from him. Uh, he was about to become a king, uh, and then um, you know he lost the opportunity to do that. Imagine somebody who loses a corporation election for a municipal corporation seat feels so bad. But this is about being the losing the opportunity to become the lord of uh, and the king of Ayodhya and succeeding none other than Dasharatha uh, and becoming uh, a great king. Uh, if one looks at it from the narrow views that we in the manner which I just described, it does appear or it just gives a creates a notion uh, about. The, the fact that, and it looks like, yes, they did live a very tragic life, but nothing can be farther from the truth. If you see, uh, Sri Rama and Goddess Sita were the incarnation of Lord Narayana and uh, um, uh, Goddess Mahalakshmi. By construct, by design, they do not have the concept of sadness or sorrow in them. They are full of jnana, they are full of happiness. And they're full of all the great, all the auspicious qualities one can think of. So the question of they being sad for anything at any moment uh, just does not arise. It is it is like saying that, look at milk. Have you seen, has anybody seen black milk? There is no such concept. Because the basic nature of milk is to be white. So the late basic nature of Narayana or the Vishnu or the Vishnu Tattva itself means that he's full of all the positives and he does not have a single negative in it. So when such a thing is the basic description of Lord Narayana and Goddess Lakshmi, there is absolutely no question of they being, uh, they being sad. The second basic answer to this question is that look at it from the point of their names. Rama itself means Ananda. Rama means happiness. And what kind of happiness? The very look on Sri Rama's face can give us the happiness that we can attain during moksha or salvation. So imagine that just by looking at Sri Rama, other people get infinite happiness or a happiness which is unbound. So can such a person himself face any sorrow? And the same thing goes for Goddess Sita as well. So what is the, like Rama, Sita's name is also called Sira Jata. It is a short form, abbreviated form of Sirajata is Sita. Sirajata means someone who was born because of the plow. We all know the story that she was born when uh, Janaka Maharaja actually was plowing the field. So how can a child be born out of a plow? Itself shows that the person who is there is someone is divinity manifested. So therefore, somebody who does not have birth, a natural birth or a common birth that other people have, cannot have the sorrow, cannot have that sorrow embedded in them. So that is the second explanation as to why uh, they never led tragic lives. They were very happy. The third reason there is who is to decide whether somebody is happy or, uh, you know, sorrow or be filled with uh, sorrow. Who, who is to decide that? Let us say, Santosh, uh, I like, uh, uh, you know, a jalebi as a sweet. For all you know, you might be hating sweets. So am I the person to decide who, what is good for you or what you find it to be sweet? The answer is no. Right? So only the person who is undergoing something 
we can tell and can pass the verdict that yes i am happy or i am sorrowful we all have this experience you know we see somebody waking up at 5 o'clock in the morning going to the gym and exercising like crazy now for him while for the rest of them everybody must be saying okay you know what this fellow i don't know why he is training himself so much why does he have to wake up at 5 o'clock so for him that is happiness when he comes back from the gym what happens is he um, he looks at all the people who are still sleeping at home and he says i take pity on all of you look at why don't you come to the gym it's such a great day exercising makes you feel good so both of them have their own reasons and their own perspectives on what makes them happy or not lord rama and goddess sita were born with a purpose which was to be role models for others in upholding the dharma so for them upholding the dharma was more important than whether they were feeling happy or sorrowful as i said they don't have the concept of sorrow itself but in their lives one important message that they have given is the life of sacrifice man will have to lead if he wants to achieve a higher purpose right so if if a, if somebody chooses to train for the olympics he has to choose to wake up at 4 o'clock and exercise be on a diet lead a very healthy life physically and mentally if somebody is not prepared to do that then he should not aspire for the olympic gold now lord narayana incarnated to establish dharma by killing demons like ravana kumbhakarna and others who nobody else could kill so he had to come all the way to do that so these lessons santosh that we call out of ramayana are something that can stand us in good stead all our lives so therefore absolutely not they didn't lead any tragic life it was whatever happened was completely by their choice and they did it with a purpose and the message that they have left is for all of us to absorb and inculcate at least in a limited way if not be like lord rama or like goddess sita right but uh, these three pointers under definitely actually are making sense uh, by the look of it that we might assume that they might be leading a very tragedy tragic life but it i think it all depends on changing the perspective and looking at uh, the bigger picture uh, and see what what sita and rama had to go through to an established dharma rather than whether they that uh, led us had or happy life yeah cool. uh, so now moving on so the next question that uh, that we always think of is uh, hanuman's memory bar right so he is known to be uh, you know called as buddhir balam so whenever we sort of go to uh, any exams or like attending any uh, might be an interview or a conference like we always think of hanuman to give that bar so uh, why do we uh, hear the story of memory lo- loss uh, especially he had to be reminded while he had to fly to lanka saying that and to sort of remind him of, of the power so what is the story all about that yeah so there are predominantly uh, uh, three lessons three stories or uh, you know topics that come up when we talk about this memory loss problem of uh, hanuman which is a very big myth uh, one is when uh, he has to cross uh, the ocean to reach lanka right and it is said that he actually forgot his own powers uh which is not supported by anything that ramayana says there was no such thing he was wait so people say that why didn't why didn't he um actually say volunteer that okay amongst all the other monkeys i will uh, you know jump the ocean why did he wait for all of them to say what can they do and then say hanuma for hanuman to cross over and jump over the ocean was no big deal it was something which was was far far more powerful than that and he has demonstrated that power again and again but what he wanted was that he was along with other monkeys and other many of other team members if you can say who all had this notion in their mind that if given a chance they can actually you know they could have done or completed the task of finding out where goddess sita was so they were in that agnana whereas they could not have done it because it was not just an ordinary ocean which itself is a very big thing to cross an ocean is not a easy thing as though that was not enough ravana had ensured that there are lot of demons and lot of obstacles for somebody to cross over get into the city of lanka and then try to harm his kingdom 
and of course himself that was next to impossible so only hanuman could have done it but if he had taken the initiative first then others would never have realized their uh, limitation and would have thought of themselves as to be omni you know most powerful and hanuman wanted to give them that very important lesson to understand one's strength but at the same time and also understand one's weaknesses so what hanuman did was he leapt over he waited for all the other monkeys to complete what they could do and the last one angada said says so none of them can cross none of them are confident of crossing angada says i can cross probably but i cannot come back it defeats the purpose if he if he has jumped and finds actually finds god as sita there or doesn't find either way he has to come back and give that information but he can't do that so therefore it hanuman waited for everybody to exhaust all the options and then he says that yes i will do it so he didn't have to be reminded he said it on his own number 1 number 2 the other commonly held example is when he actually jumps over to the gandha madana parvata to get that hill at the time of the war so all of us know hanu uh, lakshmana is injured and he needs uh, he needs uh, to be cured immediately and for that they needed the sanjeevani so which was there actually on the gandha madana hill so and that so when hanuman actually went there it is said that he brought the whole hill why did he bring the whole hill he should have just brought the herbs the medicinal herbs which were actually required to be there but why did he do that and it is said that since he didn't know which were those he forgot the names of those four herbs that is why he picked up the whole the the whole uh, mountain that's not true on the mountain uh, the medicinal plants were all there but when hanuman went there all the the presiding deities of those medicinal plants each medicinal plant has a, a deity which is actually giving it the power to cure something and that is the belief in the ayurveda even now so what happens is when hanuman goes there all these deities start to hide and play to 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 play some mischief and it's it's like a game for them to hide and ensure that and try to see whether hanuman can catch them or not hanuman is obviously upset because he has come in the middle of a war and that's an emergency situation so imagine uh, there is somebody an emergency patient who has come in after an accident and who has to be operated upon and the people in the operation theater start playing video games and say okay let's play for some time and then do the operation something similar happens in in sheer anger hanuman says that you guys if you don't come and uh, come out i know how to get you there so and he plucks the whole hill and he brings it there and uh, immediately uh, um, lakshmana is cured so to the fact that you know the, the four herbs which are there uh, you know the, he forgot the names it's so uh, it's quite a funny thing because even we don't forget the names of this when we have read it in the ramayana right so i think uh, this is a very big myth that he forgot the third thing the, the third story which is wrongly narrated is when when um, rama is coming back from the vanavasa what happens at that time is he sends hanuman to go to ayodhya and check whether how is bharata doing so bharata has as we know has vowed that he will not sit on the throne so then how 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 will he actually uh, pick him up so uh, and rama says if you see even a tinge on bharata's face that i am going to come back and he now cannot be the ruler if you see any tinge of sadness or remorse then please let me know i will not return to the to the kingdom again if you if you see anything come back and let me know so hanuman goes in advance as an advance party like an escort to a vvip uh, you know vehicle all the way up to ayodhya to check out how what how is bharata feeling right now now both hanuman and lord rama as we know are aproksha the far far beyond aproksha gnana so they can see anything anywhere but to teach others as to how one should conduct oneself and put his character and conduct above everything else they do this and as a lesson so anyway hanuman reaches ayodhya to find what he finds bharata had actually threatened that if i if rama does not come back exactly not a day later but exactly after 14 years of being in the in the forest he is going to jump into the pyre 
and commit suicide and he is all set he is getting the pyre ready which means he was very very serious about having rama back so hanuman does not go back bharat you know bharata sees hanuman he is so delighted he says you have been with rama all all these years why don't you teach me how to welcome him right and he holds him back and says don't go so why doesn't hanuman go back because remember what rama said if you find that there is something wrong you come back since ram hanuman did not come back it is understood that that uh, you know bharata is all set and is very happy to uh, you know let rama become the king again and in on the contrary bharata was actually prepared to commit suicide so there was no question about hanuman going back so as you rightly said uh, when a child is born uh, uh, especially in the southern families south indian families it's very common to teach somebody a shloka whether a child knows a shloka about rama or not we don't know but a shloka which is always there which is about hanuman is always taught to us which is all of us know buddhir balam yasho dhairyam nirbhayatva arogatam achadyam vakpatatvam cha hanumat smaranat bhavet so all these things buddhir balam or buddhihi balam yasha dhairya all these great qualities one gets by what remembering hanuman so do you think hanuman who is whom we just have to remember can himself suffer a memory loss i think it's a it's a nice joke also i think just from a point of view this the goodness about this question is it helps us understand the greatness of hanuman uh, who is second only to Ra- lord rama and sita in the ramayana so definitely does not face any memory losses and if anybody has any memory losses i think reciting a shloka of hanuman will get them back their memory so clear that uh, reading some of our scriptures especially valmiki ramayana and other bhashyas clearly established this fact that uh, uh, hanuman stands for uh, could we, we could call him as a deity of memory uh, uh, who who could uh, you know bring back all our uh, uh, forget, forgetfulness right uh, uh moving on uh, sundar the next question that i have uh, is uh, about ravana so ravana is always painted as this negative character uh, he is he is epitome of this negativity and uh, and his character uh, but uh, you always give a twist in this question like there are some lessons that we could also learn from ramayana so I'm more interested about what is this twist and what is the, the what are the lessons that one could learn yeah so i think if you can bring up the slide the question that we had answer is is it right to uh, project uh, ravana as such a negative character uh, because see after all he was uh, taking revenge on behalf of his sister shurpanaka whom uh, you know Ra- rama and uh, lakshmana both of them had humiliated the fact is this was not the start of the evilness of ravana ravana was born evil he was born in a in the, as a son of a sage of a very revered stage so he used all the powers of being uh, uh, from dwelling from that family did the uh, the penance or the tapas with uh, to lord brahma and wanted to be invincible and why did he want to be invincible because he wanted uh, to conquer the world he wanted to conquer everything and then establish his rule over the whole thing so i we know the story we are not going to repeat that whole story about that but he wanted to be immortal kumbhakarna as we know uh, uh, also wanted to be immortal but in the process ended up you know by mistake asking to sleep very well i know this is this is the generation where we face a lot of people who can't sleep so uh, kumbhakarna was uh, one such case uh, who was uh, who's actually got featured in the ramayana because he could not sleep probably there were no sleeping pills those days but he wanted to really sleep for a very long time and he never wake up so why uh, the, the problem with sleeping is it's equivalent to avidya or lack of knowledge so he is a symbol of avidya or mithya gnana or something that he doesn't know because he is always sleeping if he if he is not awake if he is not conscious one cannot learn but look at vibhishana he also did the same penance he's got the same a uh, lineage as ravana and uh, kumbhakarna but when lord brahma came in front of him he just said i'm so hard delighted to see you sir i don't need anything and on insistence he then asks 
that may you give me hari bhakti and then what does hanuma and what does lord drama give him he says become immortal so imagine some to someone who is asked for immortality lord drama doesn't give him but to, to the person who says i want to be righteous i want to be right he says you should be immortal why because he knows lord drama knows that ravana and kumbhakarna are going to die and lanka as a as a as a kingdom needs a righteous king and vibhishana is going to be that righteous king a king who is not praying for anything else but just telling them be i want to be righteous which is the central prayer of the gayatri mantra which says dio yona prachodayat please keep me oh god please keep me on the right path because if if i am on the right path if i'm thinking right if i'm if i'm i will act right and right things will happen to me and to the world around us so ramana is a habitual offender he didn't need any of this and of course the whole ramayana is replete with several stories of how he 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 created he created so much of panic and terror you know you can call him one of the greatest terrorist of his types uh, if you just see what happened uh, one always wonders right uh, when when lord rama was born why was he called rama as i said and uh, as uh, shrinidhi sir also has said that rama itself means ananda so why do, why is it so special the ananda was that of salvation or moksha da ananda as we call it right and that is why he was called rama so why was there so much need for happiness is because of the terror that was created a law around in the whole world with ravana and kumbhakarna playing havoc at that time so he is a he his story starts much before even lord rama was born and you know even to get goddess sita there was a swayamvara which was uh, which was enacted and it was there he participated and he lost so what would what would a righteous person do a, a person a gnani right will say that okay goddess sita is none other than goddess lakshmi he is she is uh, the the niyata patni or the wife the ordained wife of lord narayana who is incarnated as lord rama i should i should definitely go to this uh, this um, swayamvara and then participate it in by as a uh, as an as a member of the audience right and participate in that wedding why do people go and attend a wedding is to, to get see to or not two people get married not to go and get married to the girl of the boy who's who's uh, who is getting married there right so he should have agnani would have done that but even if he wanted to uh, marry goddess sita which itself is a very evil thought he he had the opportunity he failed so he tried to use other methods to get to get goddess sita and as we know uh, it it did not work and then he died uh, along with his entire kingdom his entire set of army his entire set of relatives everybody the whole family other than uh, vibhishana and his family uh, died so there is no question of about uh, whether it's an exaggeration as whether ravana is evil or not uh, if there's anything that he's done in his life is to throw evil terror at everybody and he absolutely deserved to die but there is a very important lesson santosh as you rightly asked that you know one thing which uh, ravana wanted when he asked lord brahma look i want to live uh, forever lord brahma says no that's not possible because anybody who is created by me has to die so ravana says may i live for 100 years i think that there is a lesson for all of us all of us should aspire to live long because that is an this is an opportunity that we've got to be uh, in our body right what is our body there's a beautiful uh, as the beautiful devarama says sadhana sharira vidu nida yadi kottaddu sadharana valla sadhu priyane it reflects the gita shloka as well which says that whatever one has to do has to do one has to do in this birth before losing this this body because the human life is so precious you know getting control over senses it's one of the big messages of uh, of the gita which we are going to see in subsequent lessons it is simply impossible or next to impossible for other living beings like animals they find it very difficult to control their urges so when they are hungry they just go kill people they they, they kill uh, other animals right so like that 
i think uh, this is a very rare opportunity and that's one lesson that i would like to take even from uh, the you know this uh, ravana is to live long and live a worthful worthy life yeah if i have to uh, so the summarize that intentions are so important that uh, wrong intentions uh, asking god you will never be able to uh, uh, get a response but just the opposite like if you want to do something good for the uh, good for yourself or 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 uh, walk in the path of dharma even god has bless you with immortality so it's so Absolutely. important to have have the intentions uh, so right and following the path of dharma absolutely uh, uh, so the moving on the next question that it is a funny question but at the same time very uh, intriguing that did hanuman try to swallow the sun and pain what's the back story to it yeah so this is again a story which has undergone a slight a lot of distortion uh, the factual errors it themselves will uh, answer the question so the question here is when hanuman was born as soon as hanuman was born he leapt towards the moon uh, towards the sun and tried to swallow the sun thinking it's a fruit right uh, so nothing can be farther from truth because hanuman is the incarnation of lord vayu and one of the uh, the the interpretation of the word hanuman is gnanavan so there are uh, all of us were born with a certain amount of very basic knowledge we have more like human instincts they, they it it not cannot even be called a full fledged form of knowledge but as as we learn from the external world our maturity improves we learn more things and we we add our experiences to it and uh, you know as as years go by we, we become knowledgeable but hanuman is not like that for him that knowledge is his nature that's why hanuman means gnanavan so when you are looking at him he was born intelligent he was it was born with a complete knowledge of the entire universe so there was no question of him not knowing that a sun is a fruit uh, in fact it's a long shot even thing to think that somebody can look at a sun and uh, you know think of it like a fruit the second thing to remember is so why did he leap the story that he leapt towards the sun is absolutely right and why is that ramayana has got a clear answer hanuman leapt towards the sun because the sun at that point in time was being attacked by mangala graha so we we we, uh, we know that this is a very very common uh, thing when you have uh, uh, the, the eclipse actually where you know it is uh the, the sun is attacked by another uh, another planet hanuman was born on pournami right so please remember this hanuman was born on the day which was a pournami and the day on the eclipse is always an amavasya or the day of the new moon so he didn't leap on the day uh that he was born he leapt 15 days after he was born and the idea was to separate and protect lord sun uh lord surya from the attack of evil planets and that's why he did that there's a long story of what happens after that but the short answer to this question is of course he did not leap towards the sun uh, of course he leapt towards the sun but only to protect and not swallow it uh, uh, you know like a fruit so that's the story right so uh, that that makes uh, that sense uh, moving on uh, so the like the next question that uh, uh, we are always uh, intrigued by is uh, wali and Ra- uh, uh, ravana while they were like close of closest of the friends but somewhere they also knew that uh, rama is not an ordinary person so uh, they knew that he he was a special uh, human being more than special in fact uh, they also knew that he was the avatar of vishnu in, uh, in their experience but why did they even decide to sort of uh, fight against uh, rama was it not uh, was it not like a common sense to sort of respect yes so uh, for, so first answer the, so if i repeat the question if i understood right did uh, you know both hanuman both uh, wali as well as ravana knew that lord rama was vishnu so that is a case why did they fight him that's the question right so yeah. first of all santosh we have to differentiate between these two characters ravana and uh, wali 
uh, Vali was an ardent devotee of Rama. Uh, he knew who Rama was. He had great respect for him. And he understood that, as the story will tell, that when, when Rama actually killed Vali, and when he was on about to die, Rama takes him on his lap and keeps his rests his head on his lap and says, you committed a blunder in your life. You committed a great sin. So that is why I, I shot you and you I'm, you're going to die. But the fact is, if you still wish to live, I can, you know, I can give your life back. To which Bali says, I'm, I have the great opportunity or the great fortune, if I may say, of dying in your lap. Why will I like to lose that opportunity? So let me die. And in, in, in the future, may I be born uh, as someone who is dear to you. And Lord Rama grants that wish and Wali is born uh, as none other than Kusha, or one of the uh, sons of um, Lord Rama as we know. And he is the one who actually succeeds Lord Rama uh, to be the king. So here is, uh, uh, here is a story of Wali. It's different. He did not oppose Rama directly. His enmity was uh, restricted to his uh, with that of his uh, brother, and he had very um, you know very wrongly abducted uh, Sugriva, who is Mali's brother, his wife, and so therefore uh, what he did was wrong. Ravana, on the other hand, was um, as I said the crook personified. He knew that uh, Lord uh, Rama was the incarnation of Lord Narayana, but that's the challenge with demons. Even when they see something which is very obvious, their ego does not permit uh, them to accept what is happening. It's very clear. Number one, when did the Rama Ravana, you, you know, the, the war, when did it start? It started at the time of the Sita Swayamvara. Ravana could not, you know, even come near the bow and lift it, whereas Rama did it so easily. That is proof enough that, uh, you know, Rama, Rama was much more powerful than. Uh, then Ravana, if, if somebody was smart, he would have just decided that, uh, you know, this is not my cup of tea. I should not do this. Uh, we, I'm up against somebody who is uh, much stronger. So there is no question of me ever winning. It, it is, it's as black and white as that. But the ego, which always come, comes in place, actually forces not only Ra Ravana. We have a, there's a bit of a Ravana in each one of us. The ego comes in the place even when something is very clear to us. We move away from it. Right? So this workshop will hopefully end around 4.30 or 4.45. And that's the right time for everybody who is uh, ordained to actually do Sandhya Vandanam. How many of us will do it? How many of us will chant the prayers? How many of us will go do an exercise in the evening? How many of us uh, will eat a healthy meal before we go to sleep? How many of us will wake up tomorrow morning fresh? Uh, to go and uh, you know give it our best in our jobs and so on and so forth. All things are known, uh, you know. But over and over again, our ego comes in as, as a very big barrier to accept this. Yeah. So Ravana's point was, you know, okay, I lost the battle at that time, but I will come back stronger uh, in in another way because uh, you know there is a quest. So let me. I know you are going to ask a lot of questions, uh, Santosh, but let me also ask a trick question. Which was a bigger war? Was it the Mahabharata war or the Ra Ramayana war? The war between the Kauravas and the Pandavas and uh, the war between Rama and Ravana. So we'll wait for that till the end of the workshop to answer that question. Uh, yeah. And that's a very intriguing question because... Okay, let me not say anything more because then I'll be giving away the answer. And remember, both Mahabharata and Ramayana are very dear texts to us. So we are very impartial and we're just going by the numbers uh, as to which is a bigger one. But the fact is, though they knew, though Ravana knew this, he uh, uh, his ego came in the way. And that's why ego is such a such a dangerous thing. It blinds us even when and kills that whole concept of... Uh, uh, of uh, judgment. Uh, yeah. If again go back to what we heard last time in the Mahabharata session, did Duryodhana not know what is going to happen to him uh, after the war? Of course, he should have. He should have at least estimated it. Why? Because just a few days before the Mahabharata war, 
Arjuna alone had defeated the entire Kaurava from, uh, army in, in the Virata Parva. And uh, Bhima had held the fort on the other side. Bhima, one, one Bhima was enough to kill the entire Kaurava family. And he's demonstrated it again and again. But their ego does not allow them to absorb uh, the fact that they are not good enough. And that's why this happens. You know, yeah, look at Kumbhakarna. He's a smart guy, though he was sleeping all the time. When Ravana wakes him up and says, look, we are fighting a war against L Rama. He actually says, you should not do this because you have abducted the wife of another man, which is absolutely wrong. So come back to Dharma, return the wife to, uh, to Lord Ra uh, Rama and let's lead a peaceful life. It's not as by for something which is not us. This is what Kumbhakarna says. But our man has other ideas and then we all know the, the rest as they say is history. So, so important so to keep our ego in check and when you find uh, some, when you find the real talent in someone instead of respecting it, we generally actually take it in a different way and our ego comes in, a, uh, in the process and then we completely change as a person. Uh, it's, it's so important to keep the ego in check. Right? Uh, so while uh, Sudur, we've uh, finished these five questions, so uh, I would like to sort of bring up the quiz component here. So uh, it is an interesting part where uh, I'll be putting up some questions to, to our audience. Uh, so these are some of the, uh, uh, the intriguing questions as well. So I request all the viewers to uh, attempt. We would give you about 10 to 15 seconds for each questions. Uh, some of the questions are not easy, but I would request to sort of uh, try your best, give you a shot and start putting up your answers in the double section. So here you go. So I'll, I'll bring up the questions. So the first question is, so we know Lakshmana, uh, who is a Shesha Avatara, the Shesha Rupa, weren't the other two brothers have any other devasa incarnate, incarnate, incarnated. So which, which means, uh, so we know Lakshmana as Shesha Rupa. So when the other two brothers have any, had any uh, uh, avatar uh, incarnations in their, uh, in their, uh, in the Mula Rupa. So the question is, uh, Lakshmana is Shesha Rupa. What about the other brothers? Are they also incarnations of someone? Of some Rupa. So the answer, I think, uh, um, OK, so we're not getting the answer. Uh, it is uh, it is an intricate question, I must admit. So yes, the uh, uh, Lord Narayana incarnated as Rama, that we know. Lakshmana, uh, Shesha uh, incarnated as Lakshmana. And uh, Bharata is the incarnation of Kama. So, and uh, all four of them, Lord Rama is the avatara of Lord Vishnu, whereas the other three had Avesha of Lord Narayana. So that's the question, the answer to this. So it is believed in some places, it is some versions of Ramayana, some interpretation says that all four of them are incarnation of Lord Narayana. That's not true. Rama is the incarnation and the other three brothers, Lakshmana, Bharata and, uh, and uh, Shatrugna were all uh, had Narayana as a special Avesha in them. So that's the answer to the question. Uh, so while we know this, uh, particular question was a little tricky, so I'll move on to the next question, which is uh, fairly simple. Uh, where was Sri Hanuman born? So while we have a couple of uh, different um, stories to it, but uh, I, I think it's fairly simple. So where was Sri Hanuman born? What is his birthplace? Yes, I can see a lot of people answering correctly uh, for the previous question as well. So, well done. 
Yeah, so Sutindra Murthy gets it right. So Anjanadri Betta. Which is uh, so the answer. Uh, Follow-up question is: What is Anjanadri Hill or Betta called today? What is it called today? Yes, Anjanadri is right. But what is it called today? What do we know Anjanadri as? Yeah, so Anjanadri is nothing but today's what we know as famously as uh, Tirupati. That was a hill on which Lord uh, Hanuman was born. He was born to Anjana Devi. So as a tribute to have gotten us such a wonderful son, uh, it is called Anjanadri. So when you are climbing the hill on a car, in a car, many of those small forests have been named after great devotees and Anjana is one of them. And you can see the one of the names it written as Anjanadri. So uh, it's one of the boards which have been put up there as a tribute to Anjana. Yes. Moving on. So the third question. Yeah. We, why Shri? Why you chose to be born as a monkey? So you could have chosen any other uh, animal, but uh, why did he choose to be born as a monkey? So any guesses? So while we are getting the right answers to our previous question, so Tripati is right. So any any guesses for the third question, Sri? Why you? So why Sri? Why you choose to be born as a monkey? Yes. So why the reason uh, why you chose to be born as a monkey is that when all the uh, gods prayed. Uh, to Lord Narayana, saying that they have to, he has to be born to save uh, the whole world from Ravana and the other demons. At that time, um, uh, you know, it was uh, Lord Narayana said that he's going to be born as in the human form, so not like Krishna or uh, Narasimha, where the 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 form of the God itself was very clear that it was none other than Lord Narayana, because he came with his four arms. Shankha, Chakra, Gada, Padma, and so, and with the full attire, making it very evident that this is not an ordinary uh, avatara. When Rama was born, it is said that Martya avatara iha Martya shikshana. That means he was born as a human being in, in the human form to be like a role model for others to learn from him about the path of dharma. So he was born as a human being. So that was uh, known to the gods. So all the gods to show that they were actually inferior to Lord Rama or to Lord Narayana. They were all born. They took forms which is one one species lower than human in the, in the sense of the evolution. So many of them were born as monkeys. Some of them were born as bears and so on and so forth. But the good thing is or the greatness about these gods is that even in those forms, they did not lose their strength. They did not lose their knowledge and, of course, their devotion for Lord Rama. Yes, when people incarnate or when gods incarnate, the, the avatara, they always lose a bit of strength compared to their original form. Other than Vayu, it happens to all the other gods. But they, they maintained their jnana about who Lord Rama was. And they all came in mass numbers, in large numbers to serve Lord Rama. Uh, and be a part of his army in his uh, fight and establishment of Dharmapatha. Uh, so we know that uh, the answers are not short, uh, not like a yes or no one-worded answer kind of a thing. But the intention is to just like uh, think and uh, sort of con contemplate and then have an answer to you. So moving on, uh, the next question is: uh, So why did Lord Rama had to be reminded by? Lord Yama to end his avatara. So we all know yeah. that Lord doesn't need uh, any nudge or uh, to be have like to be reminded of about his own avatara. So why why was this? Why was Lord Yama reminded Brahma to end his avatara? So any guesses? So it can be short. Uh, need not be like a lengthy answer. So, 
for this like at least directionally you could sort of point so we could pick it up and then tell you whether it's right or not to be correct you so the answers uh, while they coming up santosh i think uh, uh, in the interest of time uh, i think uh, we could uh, give a short answer so yes no no you're right uh, lord rama need not have to be reminded about the fact that his uh, avatar is ending and he has to uh, he would like to he, he he should be going back to the vaikuntha uh, he did not have to be told by anybody it was uh, he knew exactly who he was and why he had come here and the uh, the ending of the his avatar itself is so fascinating that when he was leaving he invited everybody and he said anybody who wants to come along with me i will take him all along with me to vaikuntha loka my god what an invitation right if somebody comes across to our house and said we are going for a movie would you like to come over without thinking we just jump into their cars and we all go away right but imagine you are calling rama is calling you to take you to vaikuntha loka what an open what an open invitation uh it is just uh, you know he, he calls everybody and he says samayata samayata ye ye moksha pade chavaha ye ye means everybody and anybody who wants to come along with me i will take them along with me so finally an aunt said i want to come along with you will you take me rama said yes i'm going to take you also so that was his benevolence so imagine somebody who is as powerful and remember there are only two people who can give us moksha one is lord narayana and the other one is goddess lakshmi only these two people are capable of taking us and give us granting salvation to 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 any soul imagine somebody who is that powerful to give us the ultimate sense of happiness can he, could he be the person who's actually forgotten something and needs a, a you know a, a clock alarm to tell him what it is i think uh, Uh, that, that's a very funny way of interpreting it uh, yes lord yama comes and uh, tells him and it's not a reminder but he shares his perspective and uh, rama very clearly knows what he has to do from then on so uh, the main purpose for which he had come which is to establish the path of righteousness and dharma has already been served so he went back to his heavenly abode that's the answer to the question So moving on to the next question is it's believed that uh, okay so it's believed that hanuman is um, shiva's incarnation is it true so this is a straight answer you can say yes or no uh, you could also elaborate if it's So it's believed that Hanuman is Shiva's incarnation. Is it true? Uh, okay. So Shrinidhi says no, uh, which is uh, the right answer. So Sudhendra Murthy. So uh, over to you, sir. Yeah. So there is uh, absolutely no mention of uh, the fact that Hanuman was a incarnation of Shiva. Uh, it is a popular notion, however, uh, we must say in certain versions of Ramayana. Now, it's very clear. Uh, as we as the story of ramayana unfolds that uh, lord uh, hanuman was uh, incarnation of lord vayu himself uh, you would have seen the common uh, uh, you know the, the 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 common chant which which is there which is vayu putra hanuman ki jay so uh, this is something that everybody knows and the reference of lord shiva does not come in ramayana uh, in the sense of uh, he incarnating as uh, Uh, you know as uh, lord vayu or uh, lord hanuman actually so there is no reference to it it's very clearly mentioned in ramayana that uh, he is incarnation of none other than lord vayu and not of lord shiva so what is the significance of lakshman right as we keep hearing this in a lot of uh, serials we keep uh, we see the line being drawn so uh, so you could say is is uh yes or no like is there a significance or 
which if there is no significance. So you can still say yes or no to it. So what's the significance of some data? You can say it's there, yes. If it's not, you could say no. Okay, uh, Srinidhi says there is significance uh, to the Lakshman Rita. Okay, so Dharma, Dharma Raja Deshpande says uh, there is no significance. Uh, he's right. So, Sudhindra Murthy says metaphorically know your boundaries. Uh, I think there is no uh, significance to it, uh, Sundar. Uh, yes, Sundar. absolutely, uh, Santosh. Um, uh, the, the question is, who draws the Lakshman Rekha and for whom? So the Rekha or the line, which is does not find a reference in Ramayana, by the way, uh, was drawn by, is supposed to have been drawn by Lakshmana to tell uh, Goddess Sita what her limits should have been. Uh, I think this itself is absurd. Ra Lakshmana is the incarnation of of uh, of Shesha, whereas, um, whereas Goddess uh, Sita is the incarnation of Maha Goddess Mahalakshmi. The difference between them in the hierarchy is absolutely unimaginable. So there is no question of he telling Sita what was what really she should be doing. The whole concept or the whole story of the, the, the golden deer was something which was a, a drama which was enacted by Lord Rama and Goddess Sita. They want it's called Asura Mohana in technical language. That means it is to misguide the wrong people. Now you can you think about it. Anybody and everybody knows that there isn't there isn't something called the golden deer. So why did they have to fall for it? They didn't have to fall for it. They knew exactly who the 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 uh, the person in, in who had come in that form and what was his objective and so on and so forth. It's, it was very evident to them. But they just played along because that is what they wanted it to happen. The whole story of Rama of Ramayana was something that Lord Rama and Sita enacted. To, to establish the path of righteousness and dharma, as I as I've said before. So therefore, Lakshman Rekha was never drawn by Lakshmana or anybody. Lakshmana has he doesn't have the uh, the wherewithal at the same time, he knows perfectly well what his role in that whole episode was. So when Rama there was a there was a uh, you know the, the, the golden deer started shouting uh, hey Rama, hey Lakshmana, hey Sita, he knew what was happening. And he went uh, over there. He did not stop anybody to, uh, uh, you know, go, Goddess Sita to actually cross that imaginary line, which never exists. So it's a concept which is uh, there in popular narration, but does not find any reference whatsoever in Ramayana. Right. So two more questions to go. So why did the Sanjivini not bring back to life Ravana Gami? Like you could still again say yes or no if. Yes, why and no. Also, yeah, Santosh, uh, I don't know whether it's a good idea, but uh, given the paucity of time, maybe we can, I can quickly answer these questions. Uh, uh, you know, and then of course, uh, we will, uh, uh, we will hear in the meantime from the people as well. So you all, we all know that Hanuman brought the hill, which had these four herbs, and one of them was called Mrita Sanjivini. So Mrita Sanjivini, Sanjivini means something which can bring dead person back to life sanjeevani so that is that is the power of that me medical herb so when he brought it so one did not have to eat the the sanjeevani the, the very smell was enough to uh, um, you know bring back people to life so in the in the war field in the battlefield people had died uh, lakshmana lakshmana had fallen uh, fallen unconscious and there were other people in from the ravana's army as well who also you know, could have, uh, should have come alive. So why did they not come to life? It's an interesting part. It's a trivia question. The fact is that Ravana did not want to expose how many of his people had actually died. So what he did was he picked up all the bodies of the people who had died in his army and he thrown them into the ocean so that uh, the opposition does not get to know how many lives have been lost, which were, which are piling up at that point in time. Uh, till he got isolated finally in the war all by himself. So that he did not want that to come out. So Sanjeevani did not have an effect because 
this all the bodies actually gone into the ocean bed and they could not be saved if he had not done that if he had not been so cheap uh, in in his in his approach towards the war uh, we we keep hearing this some of the uh, you know armies uh, they disown the bodies of their own people right uh, so he he uh, this is uh, this is something like that and he, if he had not done that those people probably could have come back to life yeah so last question uh, how is it possible for ravana to abduct sita while she is the avatar of mahalakshmi so again uh, the two two answers one goddess it was not goddess uh, sita he abducted indra had then taken the form of sita and he abducted indra there and the one who is there in the ashoka vatika is actually uh, indra who had taken the form of sita uh, goddess lakshmi who was there in the in the body of goddess sita actually had gone uh, to kailasa and to spend a few a little bit of a time with uh, lord shiva and goddess parvati so he was she was there so but this was a drama which was enacted because otherwise the, the story wouldn't move on because Han- um, ravana could never have kidnapped or abducted uh, sita by himself so all the sins or the papa that were done to uh, that uh, ravana got was as though he had actually abducted goddess like mahalakshmi herself but all the punya that uh, that that came because he bore all those difficult times being in vatika actually went to uh, lord indra himself so that's the story he he never abducted her uh, in that level and the question itself is very right saying there was no question of anybody touching goddess lakshmi uh, and least of all ravana who was just a very very ordinary uh, demon thanks sundar for clarifying uh, so with this we are end, ending our uh, quiz questions So moving on, uh, so could you just touch upon now? Uh, yes, the um, a lot of people ask us for these resources. Uh, these are available on Amazon. Uh, I have mentioned both of this. Doctor Vyasan Kere Prabhanacharya has released both of these books. Uh, the one you see on right, Rama Katha Amrita, is uh, a book which has been released uh, uh, very recently. So if you haven't got a copy of that, please do that. Excellent compilation of. the story of rama coming in very nicely okay. and sangraha ramayana which is a much more detailed exposition of uh, ramayana uh, again uh, um, translated beautifully in kannada by uh, dr vyasan kerepra these are ready resources we are not obviously telling you about all the other wonderful online discourses by great scholars and saints on the topic of ramayana itself so great resource if you want to dip into it please look at it even our workshop Uh, we have conducted a lot of workshops which covered the topic of ramayana uh, you can visit uh, madhvacharya for the youth youtube channel or you can uh, also see vyasamadhva.org uh, we will paste the links in the comment section shortly you can go there and all these audio recordings of the past workshops conducted on ramayana uh, were are actually there there's a wonderful workshop on five personality lessons from ramayana which you may want to definitely see and know how to use ramayana to enhance your professional life um, at the madhvacharya for the youth that's been our attempt to see how can we learn from the scriptures those valuable lessons which help us of course in our spiritual lives but also in our professional lives and in our personal lives as well right thanks sir uh, so so moving on so i will be touching upon our workshop workshop schedule that has been scheduled in coming days so this is how it has been stacked so 21st of august we have karma yoga or jnana yoga uh, which path do i choose and then followed by uh, uh, raghavendra swami's point of view on karma yoga jnana yoga and bhakti yoga which is on 18th uh, september to 20th november so it will be a series so it will be uh, one series in a month uh, for the next three months then moving on Uh, there are some slight changes in the dates that we have put so there are a few festivals which are also uh, uh, coming in the way so we don't want to sort of uh, have these sessions on those days so we we want uh, uh, you know free dates where people could uh, join us in numbers and uh, have these sessions uh, joined in so, so there are a few changes uh, and uh, moving on so we have an open house session uh, where uh, anyone uh could ask there is no fixed topic as such so there is an open house you can have any questions and 
uh, we could answer them. And then followed by, we have the Upanishad series, uh, then Sadhana, so the path and the milestone in the spiritual journey, how do you sort of uh, uh, plan in the spiritual journey, learning the Madhva philosophy, uh, then, um, and then we have the Shastras, how do you prove the system of uh, the Indian philosophy, and then the glories of Vishnu Sahasranama, we had uh, conduct the session during COVID uh, on, on the glories of Vishnu Sahasranama, but again, we want to uh, have another session on it. And then followed by lives and works of Sri Adi Rajaru, uh, Yasa Rajaru and uh, Jayati Tirtha. Uh, Jay so, uh, uh, just uh, just like an, uh, a notice or a reminder to all of all the uh, viewers, we had done uh, 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 like a small snippet, like a 10 minute kind of a video on Jayati Tirtha recently for Arasana Bhatsava. So, I request all of uh, the viewers to go and check out this uh, content that we had done on Jayati Tirtha. Uh, we had done two uh videos one is on the three uh the, the amazing life on jay Tirtharu, and uh, there was another uh video on three lessons from the life of jay Tirtharu. i we would uh, uh you know post these links uh, on the on the comment section please do watch and uh, do let us know your uh feedback and then followed by we are also planning for uh the upcoming uh raghavindra swami's aradhana Mahotsava as well so please uh uh, please do check out the some of the thoughtful content that we have covered. Yeah, in. Santosh, uh, just one thing. Sorry to interrupt you, but we forgot one thing, which was uh, which Sudhindra Murthy is reminding us, which is you have not answered one question, which is the bigger war, Ramayana or yeah, Mahabharata. I, uh, the answer is uh, Mahabharata. It's a very very big war. Did I say the right thing? No, I am uh, didn't say the right thing. The the bigger war was actually Ramayana. Right, it is it is several several times bigger than Ramayana, uh, bigger than Mahabharata. Uh, it is a notion, of course, because uh, whenever we talk about Mahabharata, we just think about the war, and whenever we think about the word war, it is called uh, Mahabharata, right? So it, they have become synonymous. So we are all under the impression that just from the sheer presence of how many people were involved, uh, Ramayana was a much much bigger war than. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, the Mahabharata war. So we will post in the comment section again uh, the size of the ex the exact sizes of the two armies uh, in in both the cases, and then you will get to know how big the Mahabharata, how big the Ramayana war was. So that's that's uh, uh, that that's the trivia question that we had. Uh, there is a very famous uh, saying in Sanskrit which says that if you want to compare the war of Rama and Ravana, there is only one comparison. And what is that comparison? It is the fight between Rama and Ravana alone. So there, no other war can be given as an example of what happened between Rama and Ravana. So with that, I think uh, uh, we come to the end of this workshop. Back to you, Santosh. Yeah. So the way forward... Uh... The, uh, so we've uh, sort of reformatted some of our content strategy. So we would have an online uh, YouTube session uh, once in a month that will be planned out like the way that we are having today. And we're also having like uh, shorter video uh, formats wherein we will be covering uh, anything uh, which doesn't require too much of explanation that would be uh, a shorter video format between three to five minutes. And then we'll be covering some of the topics which requires a little bit of elaboration of that would run to about 10 to 12 minutes. One of the sessions that we have covered for on the Aradhana Mahasava Jaya that's about 10 minutes. Uh, some of the other series that we've planned in coming days would be Vaita series, uh, Bhagavad Gita series, Upanishad series, Mahabharata, and meditation series. So see, these are some of the uh, series that we've planned out. Uh, and we would be shortly announcing uh, uh, some of the dates for these as well and uh, moving on is the request to participants so please do suggest uh, the topics questions that you have uh, if someone wants to become a volunteer do write into us at madhvacharya for you at gmail.com uh, and uh, you could also follow us on uh, some of the social media platforms like youtube facebook linkedin instagram and twitter so that the handle is madhvacharya for you so please do follow us on these social media platforms. 
uh, I once again request all the viewers to check out our YouTube uh, channel. We've uh, put up a lot of sessions there. Uh, all our previous sessions are up and uh, recorded and uh, 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 there for you to sort of go and check it out. Uh, do share it, do like it, like it, comment, and uh, do write into us if you have any suggestions. Or so the next workshop that we have planned, uh, which is on 21st August, which is uh, on Karma Yoga or Gyan Yoga, which is the, the better path to choose. Yeah, so please do uh, uh, lock your calendars for 20, uh, on, on this day. So uh, like if you have any questions, final questions, uh, of viewers, you can just post it. We would be happy to uh, answer them before we uh, conclude the session. Uh, one uh, more clarification, uh, uh, Santosh. Uh, I think I had wrongly mentioned that uh, uh, you know when Hanuman leapt towards the sun god, uh, it was Mangala Graha that he was actually uh, what was attacking Lord Surya. It was Rahu. I'm sorry. I'm. I, I'm. It was a slip of a tongue. It is Rahu who was attacking. Rahu Grastha Shan, you know, Rahu Grastha Surya uh, uh, eclipse, solar eclipse was what was happening at that point in time. So that is a clarification. I think uh, one of our viewers rightly pointed out, he's right. It was uh, Surya was being attacked by Rahu and not Mangala Graha at that point in time. Yeah. So Hanuman saved Lord Surya from the attack from Rahu. Right. Thanks for correcting us. Uh, cool. Thanks for, the, thanks for your time. Uh, it was uh, a great like, a learning experience for me and for all the viewers as well. Uh, so on this note, I request all the viewers to uh, block your calendars for the next session. Uh, if you have any comments, suggestions, please do write into us. We'll be very much happy to sort of respond to you. Uh, and once again, uh, a, a big uh, kudos to the entire MFI team to putting up this wonderful session uh, especially uh, to Prithvi, Prithvi and Anil as well to uh, to have this session on so consistently a month on month. So with this, thanks Sundar for, for your time and thanks all the viewers for participating in the session. Namaskar. Namaskar.